हेलो डियर फ्रेंड्स एंड अ वॉम वेलकम माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर तृप्ति मलिका हुजा इन दिस वीडियो यू विल गेट इम्पॉर्टेंट मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चन आम से क्यूज ऑन द बैक्टीरिया स्टेफाइलोकोकस दिस वीडियो इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू इफ यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द नीट पी जी माइक्रोबायोलॉजी एंड अदर एंट्रेंस एग्जाम फॉर एडमिशन टू एम एस सी माइक्रोबायोलॉजी एम एस सी मेडिकल माइक्रोबायोलॉजी और एम एस सी लाइफ साइंसिस कोर्सेस सो वॉच दिस वीडियो टिल एंड इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स बिलो एंड इन द प्ले लिस्ट यू विल फाइंड देयर आर सिमिलर वीडियोज विच विल हेल्प यू इन द प्रिपरेशन ऑफ योर एग्जाम्स दीज आर लेक्चर्स ऑन द सब्जेक्ट मेडिकल माइक्रोबायोलॉजी माइक्रोबायोलॉजी एंड ऑल्सो ट्यूटोरियल्स आर देयर If you are new to this channel then do subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get the notifications of all the new videos so now let's get started the question number 1 most strains of staphylococcus aureus show the option a is a golden yellow pigment option b beta hemolysis on sheep blood agar option c phosphatase production and option d is all of the above the correct option is the option d all of the above now see what are these different terms related to staphylococcus aureus the golden yellow pigment is produced by most of the strain of staphylococcus aureus so earlier it was thought that there is correlation between a pigment production and the virulence of the staphylococcus aureus but now it is proved that even white colored colonies are also virulent the beta hemolysis is the clear zone of hemolysis the complete hemolysis which is seen around the colonies on sheep blood agar phosphatase it is the extracellular enzyme produced by staphylococcus aureus and it has been associated with pathogenicity so all the options are correct Moving to the next question, the question number two: Which of the following bacteria are inhibited on crystal violet? One is to five-like concentration blood agar. Option A: Staphylococci. B: Streptococci. C: Both. D: None of the above. The correct one is the option A, which is Staphylococci. Staphylococci are inhibited by the aniline dyes. they are sensitive to aniline dyes they cannot grow in presence of the crystal violet but streptococci it can grow question number 3 which of the following bacteria is catalase positive and oxidase negative the options are a staphylococcus b micrococcus c nizeria and d is pseudomonas so out of these options the correct one is the option a staphylococcus it is both catalase positive but it is oxidase negative option 4 protein a is present in cell wall of staphylococcus aureus b coagulase negative staphylococci c micrococci d none of the above the option a which is the staphylococcus aureus is correct protein a is a component of the cell wall of staphylococcus aureus by the means of protein a the bacteria can bind to the fc portion of the immunoglobulins particularly igg and then there is a clump formation between the cells of staphylococcus aureus and the ig molecules and this is the basis of a test which is called the coagglutination test which is used for the detection of staphylococcus aureus Question number five: Clumping factor can be detected by a slight coagulase test, b tube coagulase test, c precipitation test, d none of the above. I can you can I hope you can guess the correct answer and the correct one is the option A slight coagulase test. it is a type of the bound coagulase coagulase is of two types the bound coagulase is called clumping factor and other one is the free coagulase the bound coagulase converts the fibrinogen to fibrin and for this this slide coagulase test is used 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स विच आर द फॉलोइंग स्टेफाइलोकोकल हिमोलाइसिंस इज लेस एक्टिव अगेंस्ट ह्यूमन आर पी सी द ऑप्शन आर एल्फा हिमोलाइसिन बीटा हिमोलाइसिन गामा हिमोलाइसिन एंड द ईटा हिमोलाइसिन out of these the correct option is the option a which is the alpha hemolysins hemolysins these are the membrane damaging exotoxins which are produced by staphylococcus and other organisms also so staphylococcus produces all the four type of hemolysin but out of this the alpha hemolysin lysis the uh, rapid rbcs but it is less active for the human rbcs so i hope you have got the correct answer now next question the question number 7 which of the following staphylococcal hemolysin gives rise to the hot cold hemolysis so hot cold hemolysis is a very important term the option is alpha hemolysin beta hemolysin gamma hemolysin and the eta hemolysin for these options the correct one is the option b which is the beta hemolysin this beta hemolysin is an exotoxin and it is a sphingomyelinase which lyses the rbcs and it has been it lyses only those rbcs which are previously exposed at 37 degrees celsius but later down the temperature has to be decreased to the 4 degrees celsius so 37 degrees celsius is a hotter temperature while the 4 degree is the cold temperature so there has to be a transition in temperature from the hot to cold then only there can be the hemolysis by the heta beta hemolysis Next question number eight: Scarlet skin syndrome is due to which toxin of Staphylococcus aureus? A. Epidermolytic toxin. B. Anterior toxin. C. Leucocytin. And D is the hemolysin. The correct option here is the option A, which is epidermolytic toxin. Now, uh, see that this epidermolytic toxin it causes the stripping off of the uppermost layer of the skin which is the epidermis and this syndrome is also called the triple s syndrome it is particularly seen in the infants and this is also called the ritter's disease question number 9 coagulase reacting factor is necessary for a slide coagulase test b tube coagulase test c both and d is the none the option b Tube coagulase test is the correct option. Coagulase is of two types, as I have told you: the bound coagulase for which the slide coagulase test is used, and the free coagulase for which the tube coagulase test is used. The free coagulase is the produced by the bacteria and released out. It is extracellular enzyme. It activates the coagulase reacting factor, also called CRF. normally present in the plasma which then converts the fibrinogen to the fibrin so this was important question next question number 10 staphylococcal food poisoning usually manifest itself within how much time after ingestion of contaminated food a 2 to 6 hours b 6 to 12 hours c 12 to 24 hours and d is 24 to 48 hours the correct option here is the option a which is the 2 to 6 hours that means if a person has consumed the food which is contaminated with the toxin of the staphylococcus then the symptoms will be seen just within 2 to 6 hours of the consumption of the food question number 11 Which of the following bacteria are novobiosin resistant? Option A: Staphylococcus aureus. B: Staphylococcus epidermidis. C: S. saprophyticus. And D is none of the above. The correct one is the option C: S. saprophyticus. Question number twelve. Which of the following bacteria ferment mannitol? A: Staphylococcus aureus. B. epidermidis c saprophyticus d none of the above the correct one is the option a i hope you have guessed it correctly 
the staphylococcus can be divided into two categories mannitol fermenting and mannitol non fermenting on the basis of the fermentation of mannitol there is only one species which is staphylococcus aureus which is mannitol fermenting question number 30 which of the following bacteria produces coagulase a staphylococcus aureus b staphylococcus aphidermidis c is saprophyticus and d is hominis so this is a very easy question and i hope you have guessed it correctly yes you have guessed it correctly and the answer is the option a it is staphylococcus aureus question number 14 the most common cause of cystitis after escherichia coli in young healthy sexually active women is A. Proteus mirabilis. B. Pseudomonas aeruginosa. C. Klebsiella pneumoniae. D. Staphylococcus saprophyticus. The correct option is the option D, which is Staphylococcus saprophyticus. Cystitis is the inflammation of bladder, a symptom of the urinary tract infection. Here, the condition is of the high fever, dysuria, pyuria. or the hematuria so usually it is because of escherichia coli but after escherichia coli the second uropathogen is staphylococcus saprophyticus question number 15 three consecutive blood cultures from a case of endocarditis revealed catalase positive coagulase negative gram positive cocci which of the following organism is the most likely cause a Staphylococcus aureus, B. Staphylococcus epidermidis, C. Is Enterococcus faecalis, D. Is Kingella kingi. The correct option is Staphylococcus epidermidis. Staphylococcus epidermidis is an etiological agent of the disease in which the predisposing factors are usually the instrumentation procedures, for example, catheterization or the prosthetic heart valve implantation or any immunosuppressive therapy the next question is the question number 16 culture from a case of scalded skin syndrome has yielded a gram positive organism that is highly salt and is seal tolerant which of the following test is useful to establish the diagnosis a catalase test b coagulase test c bisolubility test and d is the bacitracin test the correct one the b coagulase test so staphylococcus aureus is high salt tolerant and it is also positive for the coagulase and it is a causative agent of the scalded skin syndrome question number 17 which of the following cocci are oxidase positive staphylococci streptococci enterococci and the d option is micrococci the correct one is the option d micrococci question 18 scalded skin syndrome is caused by exotoxin produced by staphylococcus aureus b streptococcus pyogenes c pseudomonas aeruginosa D is Propionobacterium acne. So this is a repeat question. I hope you have guessed the correct answer. And yes, the correct answer is the option A, which is Staphylococcus aureus. Question number nineteen. The use of superabsorbent tampons has been associated with increased risk for A. Bacterial vaginitis. B. Trichomoniasis. C. Toxic shock syndrome. D scarlet fever the correct option here is the option C which is the toxic shock syndrome this toxic shock syndrome it was seen in the early 1980s when the super absorbent tampons were introduced in the market the females who were using these tampons during their menstrual cycle they showed high fever and multiple organ failure vomiting and diarrhea when these tampons were withdrawn from the market then these cases of the toxic shock syndrome reduced question number 20 toxic shock syndrome is caused by a super antigen produced by a escherichia coli b nigeria gonorrhea 
C Streptococcus pyogenes and D is Staphylococcus aureus. So we have discussed this answer previously. So you would be able to answer it correctly and the correct answer is the option D Staphylococcus aureus. Question number 21. Satisemia leading to endotoxin induced shock is not likely to be caused by A. Escherichia coli, B. Pseudomonas aeruginosa, C. Staphylococcus aureus, D. is Klebsiella pneumoniae. The correct one is the answer option C. Why C? Because all the other bacteria, they are gram-negative. Escherichia coli, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Klebsiella pneumoniae. These three are gram-negative, while Staphylococcus aureus is gram-positive. And endotoxin, it is a component of the gram-negative cell wall, the lipopolysaccharide present in the gram-negative cell wall. It causes the septicemia, the shock-like condition. So, Staphylococcus aureus is only gram-positive and it does not produce endotoxin. So, it can't cause the septicemia, the shock condition. So, the correct option is the Staphylococcus aureus. So, these were the important MCQs on the bacteria Staphylococcus. Hope the explanation is useful for you. So, stay tuned for more important videos. Happy learning, happy studying. Bye and take care.